Vexa syndrome is a newly described disease that was first identified through the National Institutes of Health and described in late 2020. Hello, my name is Matthew Koster. I'm a clinical rheumatologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. And on behalf of my co-authors, I'm happy to present some information in regards to the article entitled Clinical Heterogeneity of Vexus Syndrome, a case series. Vexus is an acronym that describes what is seen in these patients, including V for vacuoles on the bone marrow, E for E1 enzyme, which is the enzyme that is affected by the mutation found, X in regards to X-linked, uh, that is the way in which it's identified within the genetic findings, A for autoinflammatory, and S for somatic, somatic being the method in which the genetic abnormality is found, which is after the patient is born. This condition, although new, is something that is being identified quite readily now that we're able to recognize the phenotype of patients, which is very important for providers to be aware of. This paper that we describe identifies nine cases that were seen at Mayo Clinic and also in collaboration with UCLA. These first nine patients seen at Mayo have very similar features in combination with what was seen at the NIH in their first initial cohort. All of the patients were men. The median diagnosis age was 74, and patients had an average duration of symptoms of approximately four years before diagnosis, the longest nine and the shortest two weeks. These patients, when they are seen, are often evaluated in multiple different areas, including hematology, because they can have anemia, often with large size red blood cells or macrocytic anemia, and in rheumatology because of different inflammatory features. It's been difficult to identify these patients because sometimes they will have features suspicious of other rheumatic diseases, but do not fully fit those characterizations. The patients that we have seen and also that have been described in the literature often will have inflammation of the nose or the ears, also called chondritis, have difficult to control or manage inflammatory arthritis. They can have inflammation of blood vessels of different sizes, including the skin or medium-sized blood vessels in the belly or large-sized blood vessels called vasculitis. And they will also end up having a lot of symptoms like fever or chills or night sweats or weight loss. Some of them may also have eye inflammation, either swelling around the eyes or swelling of the outer portion of the eye itself. One of the common things that's seen is that patients are very difficult to treat except with prednisone at doses 20 milligrams or higher. So many of the medications in rheumatology that are tried are often not successful and newer therapeutics are strongly needed and investigations will be ongoing. This has been identified both through the NIH cohort, other descriptions, and has been seen similarly within our group. What we try to describe in this paper is the different presentations of patients that we have seen and identify different ways of recognizing this condition, both to assist and aid hematologists, pathologists, rheumatologists, and internal medicine doctors to recognize these conditions earlier. Several of the descriptions are presented in the paper, and some of the images show features to be aware of and to recognize and consider if these patients present to you. I'd like to have you read the paper and identify some of these for yourself in regards to patients you may think have this, and really consider patients who are male, have large red blood cells or macrocytic anemia, difficult to control inflammation that is steroid responsive. If these patients are identified, testing them formally for the genetic mutation of Vexus is necessary and can lead to additional evaluation at centers like Mayo Clinic or the NIH. Thank you very much for your attention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook, you can also follow us on Twitter, 
More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.